So I want to show you how I've been putting these together. <clears throat> I've got a, uh, my workshop table has a steel block in the corner. And the guy that built this house in 1947 had a steel bar attached to those two holes and those two holes making a perfect 90 degree. And what he used this for was he went out when he bought, when he built the house, he wanted to put windows in his house and he was going to build his own windows. So he went to the store and he bought himself some strips of aluminum and pushed them into the corner so they'd be perfectly square. And then I've got a place over there that he would put the windows in and the house now in 2020 still has the original aluminum windows that were put into the house in 1947. How many other houses had aluminum windows in 1947? How many? That many, none. This house is the first house anywhere in the world that had aluminum windows, 1947. So anyway, <clears throat> what I do to mount them is get them oriented so that they are the correct orientation. And then I'll take one and just tilt it sideways until you get it started and then push the others in. And then get my handy hammer. A little bit on each side. Keep it nice and even. And that's perfect. And then I will take a uh, <clears throat> dot of super glue on the back side. Uh oh! Just to make sure that um, they don't come apart later. But trust me, it ain't gonna come apart later, even if I didn't put the super glue on. Um, I mean, uh, so it's not necessary, but I'm trying to make it so you can see. You can, you can see a little bit where I did. But anyway, after dropping them all out, that's how it is. And in this orientation, I can either have three sitting on the bottom, I turn it upside down, and have two sitting on the bottom. So if you wanna be able to slide things underneath or sit things on top, but I could have gone on and on and on and made this thing huge. Um, each piece, each one of these pieces takes about nine hours. You'll see I'm going to post absolutely every piece that I build. I mean, I've spent about, I mean, I'll look when I pull all the files together, but I'm going to say I've spent about two weeks putting this whole thing together. I did some drawers by themselves, some independent, some together. You'll see when I put it all together. Um, I'd like to thank the artist. I wish I'd, I'd forgotten to get his name, but I'll make sure to uh, put a link to uh, the item in the description. And uh, I want to thank him for all his hard work. He has a ton of designs on Thingiverse. So you really should check out his page. He's got all kinds of really cool stuff. A lot of other containers as well. A lot of different shape containers as well as all kinds of other stuff. So anyway, I would thank the artist once more. Thank you very much. I appreciate you muchly. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that jazz. I appreciate all of you. So this is the uh, first two pieces of the, it's called the Hive Modular Hex Drawer by O3D, otherwise known as Dan O'Connell who has 69 designs on Thingiverse. Um, he's got all kinds of fun stuff, some more stuff like this and some uh, other characters and stuff. But I wanted to make two by themselves to make sure they fit correctly before I went to making a whole bunch of parts. So as you see, they do. Uh, no extrusion problems. It looks like they'll fit just fine. So. Uh, look for another video coming up with a lot more parts, including the drawers and everything. And I want to thank uh, O3D, the artist, for putting this up and making it available for everyone. Um, it's an easy, super-duper print. This was done at 0 0.2 layer height. Um, and it's not bad. Um, not bad at all. Um, and I normally do shorter layers, but uh, it was going to take more than a day if I did a, a 1.5 or a 1. So I made it 2 and made the infill 5%, really low. Um, and it's plenty, plenty steady. Um, it does not need more than 5%. So I'm going to keep it like that, print a crap load more parts, and you will see it in a future video. Thank you very much. Thumbs up, all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys.
All right, so this is continued testing and sizing of the Hive Modular Hex Drawers by O3D, otherwise known as Dan O'Connell. And what I'm doing right now is just making sure that uh, the drawers fit into the modules and that the modules do uh, fit together also. So, um, I've already fitted them together once, to see, but there you go. You can see they slide together pretty well, and that one slid together a lot easier than the last one I tried, but <clears throat> they fit together well enough that it's not a struggle like the last ones I saw. And uh, some further detail, uh, Dan says that when you make the drawers, you need to make them at 99%, so that's what I did. But he doesn't mention what to do with the handles. And you'll see the way the handles are built is they've got a uh, um, they've got a little peg on the back side of each one that goes into this part. And um, if this part right here is at 99%, what is that part at? Well, I left it at 100% and it does fit correctly when you leave that part at 100% and make the drawer at 99%. So keep that in mind when you do your slicing. It's very important. I want to thank Dan for making this available because it's super cool. I'm getting ready to make a crap ton of parts and put it all together now. So thanks, Dan. Appreciate you.